You'll never be the same after this service this morning. No, no, how many people believe that you'll never be the same after this service this morning? You gotta believe it. God came here to give you some information this morning, and He's doing it through uh, His vessel. I'm just a vessel who gives you the information. Today we're talking about specific redemption of Christ. I hope you know that there is a specific redemption uh, for Christ. First, you gotta know what redemption means. Redemption simply means the recovery of something lost. Recovery of something lost. And so there has to be something lost for you to even be able to redeem it, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's recovery of something lost. So the question has to be, what was lost or what is lost? Um, and, you know, so when you ask the question, did we lose something? The answer would be, yes, we've lost something. And that's what Genesis 3 says. Genesis 3, 4 is talking about uh, the very moment where man and woman... Uh, started listening to anything else other than God. See, any, uh, God is our sole provider. He is the one we should be listening to at all times. Anytime we listen to anything other than God, we're doing what they did in Genesis 3-4. That was the moment where man, uh, where the serpent, you know, who the, everybody knows who the serpent is. That's the same name as the devil, <laughs> Satan. Um, the serpent took God's word, the words that God gave to Adam and Eve, took those words and all he did was added doubt to it. Did you know that what he did in, in those years, he also does now? All he does is take the words of God and puts doubt in it and towards your life. Let me give you an example of that. Uh, the, you know, what he, first of all, what he said to Adam and Eve is uh, God told Adam and Eve that you will surely die if you eat of the fruit. Uh, from a specific tree and Adam and Eve believed that but when the serpent came the serpent said the first thing he said is the opposite of what God said he says you will not surely die and so he questioned the same thing that God had already given him directive on if you eat this you will die Adam and Eve believed it until the enemy came in and said, you will not surely die. Isn't that what he does to you? You know the word of God. You know what God says to you. God says something like, you know, the word says God will never leave you nor forsake you. How many people have heard that before? Yes. You've heard that scripture before. But how many people when you were in your worst situation, when you were at the, the wit's end, you were at the last moment of your, your thought process, and the, that word comes in that says, God has left you. He's not with you. He's not here. He left you. He's not listening to you because of your sin. How many people have heard that before? Yes. And, and you thought, man, God is not with me. He's, he's left me to the side. But the word says he will never leave you nor forsake you. You've got to stand on the yes. promises yes. of God. Yes. You can never stand on the, the words of your mind because your yes. mind is, can be tainted by the enemy. Right. So you have to know that when God says he'll never leave you, that means that he's just as close now as he was when you were in your sin. Yeah. He's always been by your side. So you never go with the words of how you feel. You go with the words that God says. God yeah. says, he promises you that he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. But yet if you allow the enemy's mindset into yours, you hear the first thing you think is, God left me. God's not with me right now. I've got this alcohol problem. I've got this drug addiction. I've got these relationship problems, all these things going on in my life. God couldn't be with me. I'm a sinful person. Well, it wasn't based on you. The redemption that you have is not based on anything you can do or have done or will do. It's based on the love of God. God did it for you. And so that's the beautifulness. Once you understand that, even in the midst of drinking, smoking, or whatever you're doing, you can say, my God is with me because he promised yes. he'll never leave me yes. nor forsake me at any time. Amen. No matter what the enemy says to you anymore, you'll never say that God is not with me anymore. You'll say he'll never leave me, never forsake me because he's always promised me yes. that. Yes. Jesus. So... Man listened to the serpent, man listened to the adversary, man listened to the devil, and fell into sin because of that. When we rebelled against God and chose not to listen to God, we rebelled against God. So, you know, uh, you don't have to be a Bible scholar in here. You have to know this. Whether you know it or even care about it or not, you are held accountable for the sin that is within you. 
You are held accountable for the sin that is within you. Whether you even know anything about sin or not, it's not based on that. You're held accountable for what Adam did years and years ago. He brought sin into everybody's life who's born. And here's what you need to know. Um, <laughs> uh, all that are in Adam's lineage, all that are in Adam's lineage contain sin. Now, I, I want you, I want to repeat that to you all, all who are in Adam's lineage contain <coughs> sin. All. Did y'all know all reply, re, 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 you know, talks about you individually? That all of you in here contain sin. Whether you like it or not, I don't care what you've done good in your life, how you've been your whole life, how you've perfected life and done things right and helped people and done this and done that. All contain sin, whether you know it or not. And I want you to, to understand this I want you to understand this, because we are all in Adam's lineage, we have these problems. So all need a savior. The, the purpose for the savior is to get you back in right standings with the God of this world. I mean, God of this heaven, earth, and this world, and everything else. The God over all. You want him, or you want to be back in good, you know, good talking with him, to be able to communicate with him, to be able to talk with him, and him listen to you. And so to be back into that grace that, that Adam and Eve had, you need somebody to pay the penalty for the cost of sin that's within your life. And, uh, you know, so everybody needs a savior. Everybody needs a redeemer, someone to return us to God's grace. Now, here's the problem. Not all of us have it, meaning the redeemer is there through Jesus Christ, but not all will know him. And it's a sad thing, but you have to understand that not everybody will know Jesus. Why is that? Because God doesn't fail, first of all. And his purpose was to reveal himself to a limited amount of people, not everyone. And I want to give you scripture on that this morning so that you'll understand it completely. His purpose was not to reveal himself to everyone. His purpose was to reveal himself to his children. Now, here's the thing. Who are his children? Everybody raise your hand and say, me. 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 So, <laughs> so, somebody was late, but they still, they still got themselves in. And so, um, if understanding that is huge because I, wanna read, I want you to read from Matthew 121 so that you can understand that God had a specific redemption process and it was for only the children of God. Matthew 121, this is when an angel appeared before Joseph in a dream. How many people have read that before? Yes. Appeared before Joseph in a dream and said Mary will give birth to a child. It said Mary will give birth to a son and it said that she was impregnated by the Holy Spirit so, so that uh, Joseph could feel okay. And then it says you are to give him the name Jesus. Gave him specific guidelines on what to do and then it said one thing that was more important to you so that you can understand what's going on. It said he will save his people from their sins. It didn't say he will save everyone from their sins. Do y'all get that? It didn't say he will save some people from their sins. It says he will save his people from their sins. And so that, what does that mean? That means you. It means he will save his, uh, his people from their sins. Now, John uh, 10, 14 is where I want to read from this morning. John 10, 14 is, uh, is some specific scripture. And I want you to understand these words. I want you to understand the word my. I want you to understand another word my. I want you to understand the words I lay. I want you to understand the words I must. And I want you to understand the words will listen. Because this is going to give you more clarification on where we're going this morning. He, this is uh, uh, John 10, 14. This is what Jesus said. And this is how you understand he is specific on his redemption. He is talking specifically about you, not everybody. He says, I am the good shepherd. Y'all hear that? He says, I know my sheep. He says, my sheep, not anybody else's sheep, not all sheep. He says, I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Did you, did you hear that? He says, just as the father knows me and I know the father, and I lay, you hear him? I lay down my life for who? My sheep. He says, I lay down my life for my sheep. Verse 16, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. You know who he's talking about? Raise your hand and say, me. me. He's talking about you. Then he was talking to them, but he says, I have other people. Other people who will know me. 
Not everybody will know me, but my sheep will know me. Yeah. And this is what he goes further to say. I have other pe sheep that are not of this sheep pen. And then he says, I must bring them. He didn't say I will bring them or I might bring them. He said, I must. Guess what? If Jesus must do something, it will be done. Amen. He says, I must bring them also. And then it says this, they too will listen. Wait a minute. It's, uh, now, now, don't we get mad when people don't listen to the word of God? Yes. Jesus guaranteed us. He said, they too will listen to my voice. Come on. Not might listen to my voice, not listen to me and then disappear, but they will listen to my voice. And then it goes further <laughs> and says, and there shall be one flock with one shepherd. Everybody say amen if you understand amen. that. Amen. This is not somebody who's speaking and don't understand what they're saying. This is somebody talking and knows exactly what they're saying, has a perfect directive, has a perfect direction for where he's going and knows exactly what he needs to accomplish. And I want you to understand this. This in no way sounds as if Jesus' death on the cross was in any way unintentional. It was purposed. It had a purpose. It had a plan. And it wasn't for everybody. It was for everybody. Say my sheep. My, my sheep. sheep. That's who it was for. Amen. So you got to understand that. that. It was not unintentional or it wasn't without a pre-planned purpose. His death, while tragic, had purpose and it completed the purpose. God can do all things but fail. He did not fail with Jesus Christ. Yes. So if that's the case, I want to break this down for you. I've read that many theologians, those are Bible scholars, they use the, use the word vicarious when they talk about uh, the atonement of Jesus. They use the word vicarious to talk about Jesus' redemption. And so they normally say vicarious atonement. How many people, have you heard that word before, vicarious? Mm -hmm. Well, I want you to understand what vicarious is. Vicarious means this. It means acting or serving in the place for someone else. Did you have, uh, it means acting or serving in the place for someone else. You know what that means? It means a replacement. Mm -hmm. Now, some of y'all are going to jump and scream in a minute. It means a replacement. Uh, 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 somebody in replace, they replaced the original person. And so when they talk about vicarious atonement, the vicarious redemption of Jesus Christ, you have to understand this. As a child of God, you've got to know that you were purposed and planned since the beginning of time. It's not something that just happened. That means that the vicarious atonement came for you, not for anybody else. And it's mistake proof. <laughs> I want you to understand this. Now, get this. Now, if Jesus stood in the place as a substitute for all of my personal sins as the sheep, and he stood in all of the places for your personal sins as the sheep, there can, then as a sheep, you can never be punished for the sin because he was a worthy substitute. If he was not a worthy substitute, then all your sins you'd be accountable for. There is no sin for a sheep that you can be accountable for unless Jesus wasn't a worthy substitute. Mm -hmm. A substitute steps in when the original person can't do what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You are the original person. If you're guilty of any of the sins you have committed, then the substitute wasn't a good substitute. Amen? Amen. Do y'all understand that? Yes. He stepped in the place, took the place for you, which means that your sin you can't be held accountable for if you can be held accountable for anything you've done in your past history and life or anything you will do. Here's the fact. He was not a worthwhile substitute, but because he was a worthy substitute, because he was pleasing to God the Father. Because he was the only one who can save you from, a, from your sin. Because he was the only one who walked sin free on this earth. Mm -hmm. Guess what? He was a worthwhile substitute, which means that you are not condemned. But what does the Bible say? There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? Not because you're not going to sin anymore. Not because you've sinned in your past or never sinned in your past. But because of Jesus Christ. He was the worthy substitute, took your place where Larry Gray was supposed to be damned in hell. He stepped in and said, Larry, move back. I'm taking the place. I'm taking the punishment. I'm taking all the hits. I'm taking all the bruises. I'm taking the life sentence that you have. And I'm taking your place. And there's nothing anybody else can do to stop that. Because when they say, what has Larry done? They'll say, Jesus Christ has done it for him. I need you to get this. 
this. I need you to get this. I need you to understand this. This makes me jump in my boots because understanding this, 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 this vicarious thing is powerful. So I want to continue on. So if Jesus stood in the place as a substitute for all of our sins, then we can never be punished for that sin or he was not a worthy substitute. I want you to write this down if you can. If Jesus' redemption makes salvation a possibility, because there are some people who say, well, you can possibly have Jesus if you get your life right. How many people have heard that before? Mm -hmm. If you change, you can get your life right, and, 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 and Jesus will come into your life and change you and do this and do that. That's not how it works, family. I'm, I'm trying to help you this morning. It's not based on anything you've done. It's based on what he's already done for his children. And so uh, if Jesus' redemption makes salvation a possibility, which some people would think for all sinners, because it says, you know, people say, well, it's a possibility for all sinners. That's not correct. I want to I want to I want to make sure you understand this. If Jesus, uh, uh, if Jesus redemption makes salvation a possibility for all sinners and to say Jesus died for all sinners. And yet not all sinners are saved. It's a contradiction. You understand that? <coughs> to say that Jesus died for all sinners and all sinners can know Jesus and not all sinners know Jesus, it's a contradiction to say that Jesus died for all sinners if all sinners don't know Jesus. Mm -hmm. Did y'all get that? Yes. 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 Amen. That, that, it's clear. It's crystal clear. So you got to understand that. It's a contradiction to say that. And so you know why that is? Because it's not a possibility for all sinners to know Jesus. It's only a possibility for his elected children that he talks about in several scriptures in this Bible. The children of God, the people who are destined to know Jesus, those are the, the, the sinners that Jesus is speaking of. And it's talking, so it's talking about the elect. And so you have to know this. You have to understand your scripture here. And for the elect to be punished, now here's what you need to know. For the elect, the children of God, the people who are predestined to know God. The Bible talks about predestination. We talked about it a couple services ago so that you'll understand you were predestined to know God. So for the elect to be punished for any sin would be a double jeopardy. Does anybody know what double jeopardy is? Mm -hmm. That means being punished for something that you've already been tried for. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus has already, he was already in the trial for you. He's already been to, to court for you. Did you know that? He's already been punished for you. So the powerfulness in understanding it is understanding that he's already taken the punishment. There's no double jeopardy here. You don't get punished for something he's already paid for or he wasn't the right person to pay for it. So if... So for the elect to be punished for any sin would be double jeopardy because the true substitute already paid for you. Did you know yes. that? The true substitute, yes. already, he already stepped in. Yes. There's nothing you can do to change that. The substitute stepped in for you. To even be convicted of any sin meaning means that he wasn't a worthwhile substitute. Let me break it down a little bit more for you. I hope all of y'all are getting this this morning. I want to break it down to life terms here. If you get a life sentence for committing a crime, how many people understand that? If you get a life sentence for committing a crime, and the law was weird enough to where someone who has never broken the law offers to be a substitute for you uh, for and take your sentence. Now, it doesn't change your sentence. You're still t entitled to a life sentence because of what you did. Okay, do y'all understand that? You're still entitled. You have that life sentence. There's nothing you can do about that. But the law offers... Uh, for someone else to be a substitute. Now, the, 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 the clearing to this is making sure that the person who substitutes has never committed a crime, has never broken a law at all. But the court permits it. Now, here's the thing. If that happens and the other person says, I will go to spend life and in, in eternity, the life in jail for you because you've gotten that life sentence. I've never done anything wrong in my life, but I'm willing to take your place so that you can have your freedom. If that law permits that, then you can't be tried again for that punishment, for that uh, crime. If you can be tried again, then that means that that person wasn't the person to take the life sentence. And it means that the law was incorrect because the law won't allow that to happen. 
So you've got to know as a child of God, somebody has stepped in as a substitute for you. They've taken the place of you. That means that all the sin that you've done, all the sin that you will do, everything that you have done wrong, your wrong mindset, your wrong praise, your wrong worship, your denying of God, you're walking in different directions, you're falling into sin, you're falling back into grace, you're falling back out into sin, you're falling into grace again, you're falling back into sin again, you're doing wrong things, you're cursing again, you're screaming again, you're yelling again, you're hollering at God again, you're mad at him again, you're screaming at your friends you're cursing again you're back in the grace again you're doing all those things wrong the substitute has already paid for it and you gotta be excited about that if he was a worthwhile substitute then nothing you can do or nothing you have done can take you out of the grace of god do you understand that it says nobody can take you out of the hands of god do you understand that is scripture it's not Larry saying that. It is scripture. So I want you to understand that. Stop living as if the things you've done in your life or will do will take you out of the grace of God. That enables you to focus on the grace. And stop focusing on the bad things that you've done. And start focusing on the condemnation that you have in your life. Because the Bible says there is no condemnation for those who accept Christ Jesus. And you accept him because he chose you. Amen. Amen. So you have to know this. You have to know that as a child of God, you are blessed. John 1, uh, John 6, 39 says this. It says, this is the will of him who sent me, that I lose none. This brings more purpose to what God is saying. Jesus says, this is the will of the Father who makes no mistakes. Come on. You hear me? This is the will of the Father who makes no mistakes. I want y'all to say this real loud. Say, this is the will, this is the will of, the of the Father who makes no mistakes. Makes no what mistakes. is the will? It says that I shall lose none. Woo! Do you hear that? None. Mm -hmm. How many people thought their friend might have known Jesus but got lost? It doesn't happen that way. You either know him or you don't. That's right. That's right. You can't. See, see, I, I want you to get this. There is no in-betweens here. Right. The fact that you're excited about Jesus, the fact that you're listening to his word, the fact that you came here and sang his songs, the fact that you raised your hands is evidence that you know Jesus and he knew you before you were created. That should be your excitement alone. Stop letting everything else condemn you for everything that God has redeemed, redeemed you from. The specific redemption was for you. It wasn't for everybody else. It's for you, yeah, the one who has a mindset, your mind is everywhere. Yeah, for you who's been to church sometimes and then disappears and then comes back to church. Something always draws you back in here. You know why? Because you are a child of God. Amen. Stop letting the things you've done or the things you will do condemn you or take you in the wrong direction. You have been blessed by God. Amen. You've got to know this. You are a blessed child of God to know God. Somebody said, well, I don't know if I believe in God. Well, I don't know if I can, I can do this. I don't know if I'm, I'm the right person. All these other people praising God. I don't know if I'm in the right section. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to know God more. I'm well, wait, hold on. If you don't believe in him, you wouldn't try to know him. Come on. You don't try to know somebody you don't believe in. The evidence of you trying is evidence that you believe in God. Do you know yeah. that? Yes. Stop looking at everybody else and judging yourself according to what everybody else has been through. You are a blessed child of God because God chose you. The reason you have the inkling to even desire God is because of God. Thank know you. that uh, and walk with that in everything you do. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. So, <laughs> John, uh, John 6, 39 says, This is the will of the one who sent me, that I shall lose none of all he has given me. Lose none of all. Did you hear that? Yes. Lose none of all. All he has given me, I shall lose none. You know what that means? None. That means that he's not going to lose any. God the Father is incapable of failing. He does not fail. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows your answer to your prayer before you even pray for it. He knows your need before you ask for it. He knows your financial need before you even go broke, before you have problems. He knows what you need before you walk. He knows the steps you're going to take before you even take a step. He knew your desires. He knew your falls. He knew your lift up when you needed to be lifted up. He knew that you were going to be in a dungeon. He was waiting in a dungeon for you to arrive. 
Some of us look for God. God is always there. You got to expect it. Oh, I'm going into this dungeon. God must be there waiting for me. Oh, I'm in this pit. Hello, Jesus. Where you, where you at? Come on. I'm locked up. Oh, Jesus, here you are. Oh, man, it's a pitfall in my life. Man, Jesus must be at the bottom of this pit because he's waiting for me. He's always there for his children. Amen. He's not yes. there for everybody. Come on. Yes, Jesus. Thank you. Hebrews 7.25, I want you to write that yes. scripture down. Hebrews 7.25 says this. And I, want to, I hope it brings clear the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 7.25 says this. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let me make sure y'all understand that for the people who are skeptical. Therefore, he is able to save completely. It doesn't say not half. It doesn't say half. It doesn't say some. It doesn't say save maybe if they act right. It says save completely. Say completely. completely. Say it loud. Completely. completely. It says therefore he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for who? You. you. He intercedes for you. He intercedes for you. He intercedes for you. Who wants it? He intercedes for every single one of you in this audience right now. Every single one, he steps in the gap for even the things you don't know because you are a child of God. <clears throat> so I want to break this down and make sure you understand this. <clears throat> Jesus laid down his life for a specific purpose to activate the specific redemption. For who? A specific group. You know who that specific group is? Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. I want you to look at him. Slap hands with him. Say something to him. Point at him if you have to. Say, this is for you. This is for you. Say it real loud. This is for you. This is for you. Say it real loud. This is for you. This is for you. Know that. See, some of y'all are, 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 are not ambidextrous. You're getting moved to the right. You're using the wrong arms. You're, you're slapping people who are not even there. Why are, you, why are you slapping folks who are not there? Some people reach to the curtains and stuff. Yeah, yeah, come on. We're trying to help y'all this morning. And he slapped the hands with it. It was good, wasn't it? They slapped back too, didn't they? Good stuff. Ushers, watch him. Um, <laughs> so Jesus laid down his life for a specific purpose. Did you know that? A specific. I need you to feel special this morning because you are. I need you to stop uh, stop condemning yourself for the things God has already blessed you with. I need you to know that you are a specific person. He laid down his life for a specific purpose to activate the specific redemption, not for everybody but to be received by a specific elected group, and that's you. That specific elected group is blessed. John 6, says this, no one, Jesus, this is Jesus saying this, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. You know what that means? You've been drawn. You've been pulled by God. The only reason you come here and stay here is because God has pulled you. The Father has drawn you. He said, I'm going to draw my children to know Jesus, my son. You are a child of God because he is drawing you closer to Jesus. How many people, when you were born, said, I want to know Jesus for the rest of my life? How many people said that? Zero. But how many people now, with a scream, say that you want to know Jesus for the rest of your life? Say amen if you yes. agree. Yes. You know why that is? It's because the Father has drawn you in with the, the, the specific plan that he had for your life. There is no in-betweens on this. You didn't decide. It's not a possibility. God had a specific plan for his elected children, and the purpose was not to lose one of his children. And guess how many he has not lost? He has not lost any of them. Some people think, well, some of the children who would have known God are lost. No. If you're supposed to know God, you will know him because he selected you since the beginning of time. So it's a specific redemption. Jesus died, but not for everybody. He died specifically for his sheep. And so it says, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him. <clears throat> I want you to know this. You are specific. You are redeemed of Christ. And I want you to understand that there is no change to that. 
Your life was selected by God and predestined by God. Whether you go through trials, whether you go through ups or downs, whatever you go through in your life, you need to know that Jesus selected you. If you stand on the promises of God, you can live steady, you can walk steady, and you can remain steady, even if the times are unsteady. No matter what's going on in your life, you can have no money but still give glory to God and be excited about what he's done for you. You can have no relationship but have a relationship with Jesus Christ and everything be as if you were the, the relationship you had in the past life. You can, you can have, you can be uh, experiencing divorce. You can be experiencing mindset control. You can be experiencing all the attacks of the enemy and say, man, the enemy is hitting me from every angle. But he can't even touch me because I got Jesus Christ in my life. You got to be excited about God because that's what he does for you. It doesn't matter what you lose. Right. You still have God. Amen. You can lose all things, be in a dungeon for the rest of your life, but you still have Jesus Christ. That's all you need. You can have all the money in the world and not be satisfied. But with Jesus Christ, you can have a dollar to your name and rent due and all those other car payments and everything else due. But you said, Jesus is with me. If he wants me to keep the car, he'll pay for it. If he doesn't want it, he'll take it away. If he wants me to have my, 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 my house, he'll pay for it. If he doesn't want to have it, he'll take it away. Whatever is, is his ground, it's what he wants, it's what he needs from me. You've got to be excited in Christ. You've got to know that he's there for you. He selected you. He chose you. He nourished you. He took you through all those trials so that you can understand that he is your Lord no matter what situation you go through ever in your life. Know that he is your God. He has predestined you to be here. He has selected you. He has redeemed you. Mm -hmm. The redemption is specific. You, it is vicarious atonement. It cannot be vicarious if it's a possibility for you to know Jesus. But it's not a possibility. It's impossible for somebody who God has not selected to know him. God has selected you. You have to be excited about that. How many people are excited about that this morning? Yeah. That's what we mean when we say the specific redemption of Jesus Christ. It was specific. It was pre-planned. It was for everybody who knew Christ, who were selected to know Christ from the beginning. The scripture says it clearly, and I want you to be excited about that. So everybody who agrees, let the church say amen this morning. Amen. Stand, stand to your feet and be excited in the Lord this morning for what he has done for you as a child of God.